on Eyewitness News at 6. A search was held today here in Wyoming County at the Susquehanna River for the body of a murder victim. I'm Andy Mahalsh, best story coming up on Eyewitness News. In Monroe County, they're about to start counting the homeless, why it's so important to get that number right. No field or court needed for this college competition. Find out about the new sports program coming to this university. Proudly covering all of Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania, this is Eyewitness News at 6. Good Thursday evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Nick Toma. And I'm Candace Kelly. A missing persons case in Wyoming County is now a homicide investigation tonight. 24 year old Haley Lorenzen was reported missing by her boyfriend, Philip Walters, back on December 31st. The two reportedly met online and Lorenzen moved from Oregon to Wyoming County. Walters is now in custody, accused of murdering Lorenzen and dumping her body into the Susquehanna River. Detectives say a woman who was having a sexual relationship with Walters said he told her that he choked Lorenzen and hit her on the head with a hammer. That woman also admitted to helping him tie bags of rocks to the body and putting it in the river. Our thoughts and prayers are with the victim's family. It's, it's devastating to them. Uh, they're from Oregon. They traveled here hoping to find their, their daughter alive. And sadly, we don't believe that's the case. Now the focus on the investigation has turned to the Susquehanna River. Crews have been searching the river all day for Lorenzen's body. Our lead eye team reporter Andy Mahalshik is live in Tunkhamuk tonight with an update on that search. Andy. Well, Nick and Candace search team members tell me they're taking every safety precaution they possibly can to make sure that an already tragic story does not yet take yet another deadly turn. Search and dive team spent much of Thursday on the Susquehanna River near the Falls Bridge. The river is running high and fast. They're trying to find the remains of 24-year-old Haley Lorenzen. Police say her body was dumped here on December 30th. Several boats searched an area near the bridge. Sonar was brought in also to try and find that body. Well, today we're a little concerned about the wind was a little bit up this morning. The river boat always has... Uh, the river is a challenge most of the time. Either it's too low or too high. So with our uh, new uh, airboat, we find that uh, we can get around the best. And with the river running so fast... There's submersion uh, logs, you know, and so on, debris in the river that we have to watch for every time. And the cold water could kill very quickly. Right now, it's just the, uh, the currents on the river and the wind, of course, and their personal safety, water temperature and all that stuff that we're, that we're hoping that uh, it works out good for them. And search team members admit there's no telling if the body is indeed near the Falls Bridge because the Susquehanna River is running so fast and so high. That search has been called off for tonight. It'll resume first thing tomorrow morning. Reporting in Tom Canick, Andy Mahal, Chicago Witness News. Andy, thank you. And in Schuylkill County, state police are investigating a homicide at a campsite. Troopers say they found a 53-year-old woman bleeding in a truck at Roush Creek Trail Riders in Higgins Township. They say she had been stabbed several times. The woman was taken to the hospital where she died. Her name, as well as any suspects, have not been released yet. Uh, tonight, we're also following a developing story out of Lackawanna County. Just over an hour ago, the jury handed down its verdict in the Scranton murder trial. That jury found Joseph Thornton guilty as charged in the death of Stephanie Tyminski at the Valley View Housing Complex back in December of 2014. Eyewitness News reporter Eric Dable is live for us at the courthouse with a reaction tonight. Eric. Nick, good evening. Jurors took less than two and a half hours before rendering their verdict this afternoon. Guilty on first and third degree murder. For the victim's family, this has been a long road to justice with questions about the suspect's mental health as well as suitability to actually stand trial. Family members of murder victim Stephanie Tyminski hugged in the courthouse just moments after jurors found her killer guilty on all charges. It's taken four years, but this day means the world to us. Joseph Thornton was found guilty of first degree murder, tampering with evidence charges, and witness intimidation for killing Tyminski at the Valley View Terrace housing complex in Scranton in December 2014. Prosecutors say he brutally beat the 29 year old and then staged the scene by putting her body in a bathtub and trying to clean up the evidence. He's an animal and he doesn't deserve to be out on the streets. And as far as closure, there's never closure when you lose a child. 
I'm blown away. I am so grateful, so, so grateful that he's found guilty on all these charges. It means so much. And may Stephanie finally, finally yes, rest in peace. Thornton was not present for any of the trial. On several occasions, he told the judge he would be disruptive. He was also not present when the verdict was read just before 5 p.m. Well, I firmly believe he was manipulative from day one in this case, and his attempts to disrupt and delay this trial is just more evidence of his manipulation. Now, before this trial even began back on Monday, a judge did rule that Joseph Thornton was competent to stand trial. Today, before the verdict was read, his attorney asked that he actually not be brought into the courtroom because he feared for his safety. The district attorney also agreed that safety could have been a legitimate issue. We're live tonight in Scranton. Eric Dable, Eyewitness News. Eric, thank you. And because of that first degree murder conviction, Joseph Thornton will face a mandatory sentence of life in prison. The judge did not immediately set a date, though, for that to be imposed. In an Eyewitness News follow up tonight, a man has been sentenced in connection with a deadly arson in Scranton. That fire happened back in 2015. 61 year old Diomedes Sabalos admitted to conspiring with his brother to burn his house down in an insurance scam, but his brother suffered fatal burns during the fire. Sabalos will be spending 10 to 20 years in prison. A woman is dead and dozens more are temporarily displaced after a fire this morning in Monroe County. It happened at a subsidized senior housing facility, the Shirley Fudge Plaza on South Kistler Street in East Stroudsburg at about 9 o'clock this morning. Firefighters believe the fire started in the victim's bedroom where she was found dead. The fire was contained to her apartment. She may have had a medical condition and went down and knocked something over. You know, just don't, don't, don't figure it out. The coroner says an autopsy is scheduled for tomorrow to confirm the victim's identity. A state police fire marshal was also called in to help determine a cause. New tonight, we've learned that the FBI personnel visited Scranton City Hall on Wednesday. An FBI spokesperson said that they were there for court authorized activity, but they wouldn't say what that activity is. We reached out to the mayor who referred our questions to the city's solicitor who declined to comment. More cold, more snowflakes. Yeah, it's starting to feel like winter these days. It certainly is. Chief Meteorologist Josh Odell is on the rooftop with a look at our forecast tonight. Josh. Hello, Nick and Candace. It is a little cold on this roof and it's uh, it's awfully windy for sure. You don't need me to tell you that. Let's get you started tonight with a look at our radar. Flurries and snow showers are going away and really the big weather story tonight and tomorrow will be the wind and the cold. 27 in Scranton, 30 in Sealands Grove and Pottsville right now. Overnight tonight, windy and cold, and we'll see uh, maybe a couple of flurries or snow showers. By morning, it's in the teens. An hourly forecast this weekend, anytime you want it. Just download the Eyewitness Weather app. Nick and Candace, we had this winter storm tracking to our south over the weekend. I'll let you know what to expect. I'll see you downstairs. Okay, thanks, Josh. After a very wet 2018, Governor Wolf has announced more than $3 million in grants for projects to help produce and control stormwater for Pennsylvania communities. Several counties will be receiving the grants, including Schuylkill County. The county will be getting $325,000 for the Mill Creek floodplain restoration project. The goal of that project is to reduce flood impacts along Mill Creek in Port Carbon. Volunteers are needed to help find and then count the homeless in Monroe County. Now these volunteers will conduct surveys throughout identified areas in Monroe County on Wednesday, January 23rd. The ultimate goal is to know how many of them need vital services and then find the money to pay for those services. It helps us identify if there's gaps in our community. Now, if you'd like to volunteer, there's a mandatory training session next Wednesday, January 16th from 4 to 5 p.m. at Street Two Feet Day Center in Stroudsburg. You'll learn how to approach people and conduct the surveys. Still ahead on Eyewitness News at 6, the next time you see someone glued to a computer screen, don't assume they're wasting their time playing video games. They could be part of a new eSports team. A local college is putting together a team, and we'll take a look at that program in two minutes. But first, let's get to our photo of the day. Sue took this picture of a sunset wow. in Hawley, and that is... Well, that's a screensaver if I ever mm -hmm. saw one right there. Nice job, Sue. If you've got a photo you'd like to share, post it out to our Eyewitness News Facebook page.